In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can take your own blood pressure. And so the tools you'll need to do this one are going to be a stethoscope as well as a blood pressure cuff and the actual pump, the hand pump. And these things will have a little valve on the back of them like this thing. And so you need to figure out which way this valve opens and closes because you're going to be using that a lot. Basically, you're going to want to make sure that this valve is fully closed when you're inflating it. And then as it's inflated, uh, you will then rotate this thing ever so slightly to start getting that pressure to come out of it. And the end result of getting it out of this, just before I do it, is going to be two numbers, the systolic pressure and then the diastolic pressure. Systolic pressure will be the pressure at which you first begin to hear lub-dub, 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 lub-dub. And so it'll kind of be this thing that crescendos. It'll start out really softly and it'll probably be around uh, 120 mil, uh, mmHg, and then uh, that's the normal value. Uh, and then the last number, the last time you hear a lub-dub, and then it'll kind of just fade away, as you're releasing pressure in this thing, will be called your diastolic pressure, and that'll be the second number. So usually when people report these things, they're gonna be, you know, 120 over 80 is considered normal, um, anything over 130 is starting to become pre-hypertensive, uh, and so usually what will happen is doctors will tell their patients to start calculating their, or determining their blood pressures at home so that uh, you can get more readings over time. Because the thing is, like, when you do this in an exam room, uh, you know, white coat hypertension is totally a thing. If you've drinking caffeine recently, if you've been physically active recently, um, that'll affect your blood pressure. Um, so those are the key things to take note of that can affect these numbers and make you think that you might be hypertensive when you're not. Um, so basically, you just want to make sure that you're sitting down, both feet, playing it on the floor. I know you can't see it right now, but basically just very, very calm. And then um, on some of these higher end cuffs, they are cool and they'll tell you like this artery index marker. Basically, in your arm, you have the deep brachial artery. That's how you're supplying your arm muscles and all the cells in your arm with blood. And so basically what um, it does is it runs kind of underneath your bicep right here. And so this is the part that you will be focusing on. And uh, the other thing is that when you take blood pressures, you want to have it on the actual skin itself. You don't want to do it while you're wearing like a long sleeve shirt. You don't want to do it when, um, you know, someone like just make sure you've rolled the sleeve all the way back. The person's or if yourself, you're not wearing a, a jacket or anything. You just want to make sure you've got direct contact on this thing to make sure you get the most accurate readings you can. And then the other thing is you want to make sure that your arm is kind of just relaxed and placed kind of at, a, at this level. Um, so uh, that's how you want to do it. And so if you're doing this, you know, to someone else, you're gonna need to like prop their arm up like this. But in my case, I've got a little table thing right here I'm able to support my arm on. So that's how it should look. And then also when you are getting a cuff, you're gonna want to make sure you get the right cuff. Um, and so this right here is an adult 11 cuff for me. Um, it's what fits. And on these cuffs, there's going to be a, an attachment point where the actual tube runs. So this obviously is going to be on the outside. Um, and then there's a bunch of Velcro. And you do want to make sure that this thing goes on fairly tight because you don't want it to just, uh, you know, slip off. And if it's too loose, again, you're not going to get the most accurate numbers. So don't make it super tight, but just make sure that it's on there. Um, and so, you know, if you're just doing this on your own, uh, you can make sure you get the right side. And you're also going to make sure you get that artery marker to line up correctly. Obviously, it's easier said than done when you're on camera. But, but um, if you guys can see, we're getting these markers just right. Just like that. And now with these stethoscopes, these things, um, if you'll note, if you look at them like this, you're gonna see how they're like angled, they're not flat. And so with these angles, when you put them on, you're gonna want the angles to be pointing towards your eyes because that's the way that your ear canals are going towards those tympanic membranes. So when you put these things on, I think 
I'll, people, it's the first time you do it, usually you'll put them in like this, where they're like kind of pointing backwards relative to your head. That's not how you do it. You're supposed to put them in like this, and that's help you here as well as you can with the stethoscopes. Um, this is called the diaphragm side. This is called the bell side of the stethoscope. You're gonna be using the diaphragm side because this is the side that picks up those high pitches, those love dubs that come from your heart as it's pumping that blood through uh, the brachial artery that we're gonna be listening to. And so make sure you put these things on right. You're gonna do this. And another thing you can do that's pretty helpful is, especially if you're just, you have literally one hand because your other arm is completely occupied. So you can tuck the diaphragm underneath this thing. And as you inflate it, it will hold it in place for you. So you can use your one hand, your right arm, to actually do the pumping and then also the relieving of pressure. So once you get it just like this, you're gonna make sure that you've fully closed the valve on this guy. I'm just gonna get started just so I can hold it in place. And so if you look carefully at this number right now, you can see that it is The needle has a little bit of a tick to it. And what that tick means is that's the that's the blood and the brachial artery pushing through. And so basically what you do, so we're gonna go up to one, uh, 200. And at 200, you will not hear anything because no blood is making its way through that artery. And then you're gonna slowly turn this valve to start letting pressure out and then you just listen and just keep listening. I'm gonna stop it right there. So at about 120 for me, the camera can pick this up. You can see the needle moving. And so that means my systolic pressure is 120 because that's the first number I hear that. If I go to 125 or 130, I don't hear it anymore. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna release the pressure now. And then around 80 is the last number that I hear it at. And I'm gonna uh, just go back up a little bit and still see that uh, little needle moving back and forth. I'm gonna release the pressure. Yeah, so once we get to around 80, that's our diastolic pressure, and then you can open up the valve and let everything go back. And so that is how you can determine systolic and diastolic pressures. Uh, if you're getting very crazy numbers, um, I would recommend redoing this and also just checking, but um, you know. So that's how you guys do it. I hope this video helps, and thank you all for watching.